Um, we're going to talk about your dream team. Who do you need on your team, right? Who does that look like? Who are those field teams? Who are those technology team members that you need in order to run this business? So, uh, all right. So who do you need on your team? So I'm going to start with the field partners. All right. Your field partners, which include your cleaning service. Oh, man, I'm a, oh, Lord have mercy. I wish I had a, um, I, I, I want to just really highlight this cleaning service. <laughs> uh, I, I haven't actually, I haven't, I feel like it's been a while since I use Zoom. I'm trying to find a pen so I can really highlight this because I think anybody who have a list of listing or anybody who's in the space can agree with me that your cleaning team is probably one of your most important team members um, because they can make or break you. They they are literally like the backbone of your business. Um, then you have your interior designer, which is if it's something that you do and you like to do, then go for it. You know, Ellie gave an amazing presentation and she she showed you her site and she talked over designs and 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 what to do to really increase that guest experience. Um, so, you know, if you if you if you are a preview and, and you have that foresight, then go for it um, or you can outsource it as well. Uh, maintenance is another important team member. Uh, we like maintenance a lot, even with our arbitrage properties maintenance is important because a lot of even the landlords as well as like the apartment complexes in most cases they have a maintenance person that they like to use on staff but we also like to keep a maintenance person on our side as well just in case because when maintenance issues come up what, what needs to be handled it needs to be handled quickly so in case their person may not be able to get there as quick as i need them to then i always have my personal standby um then in laundry service another important team member that this could be handled by your cleaning team or it could be handled by a third-party company um inspector concierge house porter uh, uh people like that i mean these are all very important team members we're going to get into the meat um in terms of breaking down these team members here uh, so cleaning service, I want to get it to them first, because again, they are crucial, right? So cleaning service, you want somebody that's reliable, right? Somebody that's thorough and reliable in the sense that, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, somebody on your cleaning team that takes responsibility. Cause here's the truth about cleaning, cleaning uh, team members, they're human beings, right? And just like any other human being like yourself, you're not perfect. So it's not, it's not so much so a team member that, that you're, you want as much perfection as possible, which is 100%, but you gotta keep in mind that, okay, they're human beings, so they will mess up, but how do they respond to that? Do they take responsibility? Are they reliable? I've had a cleaning team, I have cleaning crews, literally say, oh, I'm not up to it today. <laughs> like what? Or it's raining uh, and, I, and I don't feel safe driving. Like all, I've had all kinds of excuses, um, but you need reliable team members. And then do they take responsibility as well? Like, do they take responsibility? That's what you gotta keep in mind. That's what you gotta look for and think about as you are looking for a cleaning team member, because it's not if they mess up, it's when they mess up, but how do they actually rebound from that? Do they learn from it? Do they make the same mistakes over and over again? So you want dependability, right? Um, you need to clean your units for like dependable people. That's all we're talking about, right? Dependable cleaning team uh, is, is crucial. Um, and try out several because, it, you know, when we when we look to hire a new cleaning team, especially as we were getting going, we talked to a few of them and then we gave them like trial run throughs. Right. So even if you just kind of mess up the room yourself and then have them clean it for you and then um, and then assess them from that, or you can have them clean a unit after a guest checks out. That's perfectly fine as well. Um, some people don't like to um, put them at that position quite yet before um, hiring them officially. But I honestly didn't mind it. I let them clean the unit because we're all, we're all going to go back and talk through it and, and you know, um, fix anything that they missed anyway. So that's what we did. And it's been working out just fine. Again, you may have to kiss a lot of frogs. I've been in this business about four years. I am on my, well, it's gotten better. So I haven't had to hire a new cleaning team for, for, for a while. Um, but I am on my sixth cleaners, sixth cleaning team. But now we have multiple cleaning teams because we have cleaning team that clean kind of our smaller units and cleaning teams that clean like our bigger units. So you can kind of dissect it, do it kind of the way you, you, you want to. I honestly recommend uh, maybe after five to eight listings, depending on how you how your business is set up to bring in another cleaning team, especially if you are having issues with getting the units ready on time for check-in. And so you definitely want to uh, um, keep that in mind as well. And uh, again, you will have to kiss a lot of fraud before you find a, your, your cleaning person or prince per se, right? And and it's that could be the case. But it's always important that you be patient with your good cleaners because understand if they're good, that doesn't mean that they won't mess up. 
like I said earlier, they are if they're 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 good cleaners, but how do they actually respond to the to the to when um, something bad happens? Uh, and always make sure that you're clean. You're, you're meeting with your cleaners consistently, at least um, on some type of consistent schedule. Because the truth is, a lot of times it's not that the cleaners actually get worse or they get bad at their job over time. Is that they just get complacent over time? They they get they they feel like they don't need to use the checklist because they keep they've done it so much they they've cleaned the unit so ever so many times right so they get complacent so you got to keep the the importance of the cleanliness in the forefront of their mind and a good way to do that is to make sure that you are touching them in terms of meeting with them going over any reviews that you had that was bad um, or any reviews that was questionable or anything that you that a guest told you in a private message that mentioned about cleanliness you want to bring that up to them so they will always stay on top of under the peak uh, peak performance and stay on top of their game so again they have a huge huge part to play in your short-term battle success so just some, just some resources in terms of sourcing your cleaners right um so websites like make this and handy uh facebook um referrals through individuals of course we get i mean that's pretty much the only <laughs> referrals are probably the, one of the main ways that, I, that i'll find cleaners now and but then um i'll also add on here turnover right so turnover bnb or some people use uh proper for the whatever cleaning management software that you use now these cleaning management softwares now have uh they they have they have features to where uh cleaners can actually subscribe to the software mm -hmm. and um that way hosts can source cleaners directly from the platform mm -hmm. um so we use that and from for managing our cleaning process but uh you can also use it uh to find cleaners as well we personally have not but not because we didn't want to just because we didn't have to um so yeah but that's another good resource for you Let's get to designing. Um, designing is important, <laughs> of course, as you could tell, because here's the truth about it. The truth is, is that back years ago, you know, Airbnb is 10 plus years old now. Um, back years ago, you didn't necessarily need, right, much to be very successful. Your design skills did not have to be up to par. You didn't have to have quality mattresses. And because Airbnb was so new, it was such a thing to do. And and so people would, would just wanted to stay in Airbnbs just because, oh, I stayed in the Airbnb. It was cool. So, but that was then. This is now. Times have changed. So guess what changes with time? Expectations. Expectations have changed now. So understand that you need to make your units nice, homely. Do not skimp on the things that are important don't you can cut costs i love something uh jay massey said you can cut costs but don't cut quality i think that's very important things that are important for you not to cut costs on your mattresses like your pillow your cooking set like keep make sure that those you don't have to break the bank but make sure those things stay quality uh, to make sure that you are providing the maximum experience as possible for your guests um but of course you can be as savvy as you want to be uh, but just certain things you want to make sure that you don't cheapen okay so um design service again if this is something that you like to do then go for it then do it um i designed a whole lot of my units uh, when i got started prior to bringing in a design team and i still design some of my units right now i'm setting up a themed unit right now um i'm setting up two themed units right now at the moment and i designed them on my own because i just want I, I just had a vision that i have and i wanted to execute that vision specifically so um so yes so it's been that again you can definitely do it on your own but you can also outsource as well and that's not there may not be something there may be something that you do in the beginning of your journey it may be something that you do for uh that you don't do at the beginning of your journey but it's completely up to you it depends on what you are doing and and i know that um ellie mentioned themes but things are great right go shoot for themes if you can um do you need a thing to be successful in this business no no you don't but it does provide a way to stand out remember we talked earlier about how expectations have changed so theming your units is a way that you can stand out um, um amongst other listings so if you can uh definitely definitely i recommend doing a thing for your units uh, maintenance is important we personally keep a maintenance person on retainer, <laughs> us personally. I think when you get to a certain amount of units that that might be a good idea because now that they're on call, now they are on, you know, um, we, you know, you don't necessarily have to do that off top, like like I mentioned, but keeping a maintenance person on standby could, would be a good good route to go to handle things like air filters, batteries, um, electronics, ceiling fans, appliances, windows, doors, furniture, cabinets, I mean, walls, floors. We just had a, 
a guest put a hole in one of our walls <laughs> um and the maintenance guy was was there right away to to patch it up a new drywall and tape flow paint it was it was done so um so yeah maintenance person is important i think it's important that you keep one for yourself i mentioned earlier about how a lot of times especially when you execute uh, arbitrage plays they most likely have maintenance persons on staff but it's always important that you keep one for yourself um that way you can uh bring them on as you need to as you need them to so some sources for maintenance and design handy.com tax rabbit of course referrals to individuals are uh, read yelp reviews um and and uh it is perfectly okay to to try out different maintenance people um but i think probably one of the best ways is referrals as well but there are also resources like these sites here a design team of course here are some good design companies because here's what's great about designing too if you like especially if you want to design yourself you don't have to hire like a whole person um if, unless you want to right you can do virtual designing you can where they will design your space for you virtually they will you have to scan the room send the pictures send the videos they'll ask you questions about your style um about what you like you know do you want modern do you want more traditional do you want more rustic they'll get a sense of feel of what your design style is and then and then they will they will customize design your place for you and send you links to all the items so you can go ahead and design your space to look just like it in the way that they in the in the um, rendering that they send you and modesty and havenly are good for that um, but you can also find um, designers on home advisor as well there are plenty of designers on there that have profiles on it that you can look at to bring on your team so just wanted to share those resources with you guys um laundry service man this is another crucial part of the process <laughs> you know linen and laundry crucial crucial so um again you can this can be done by a cleaning service um you can use an outside service for your linen and laundry as well um and there's plenty that that um that are in your local marketplace i'm sure that um that you can work with a lot of those companies work with hotels and they've they've worked with hotels in the past and they will be good resources and they already understand the lay of the land in terms of the importance of the cleanliness um how the importance of the speed of the cleanliness as well um and so how to properly wash them you know things like that um so those folks would be be good if you decide to uh third party outsources so again you can do it with your cleaning service you can do the laundry on site by your cleaning team or sometimes your cleaning team would take the dirties with them and when they leave and bring them back clean the next at the next cleaning so a lot of cleaning teams uh sometimes offer that service as well so keep that in mind when it comes to your laundry service so when it comes to linen service again um local to your area um, if you're going to use a third-party company, vet them, okay, take recommendations, check reviews, um, try different ones, and uh, find one you like and stick with them. Um, we we found that the ones that have experience, especially working with like with hotels, they just understand more the speed, like they just understand the concept of the business model all in one. So they always, always a good recommendation, good resource to go when they, if you are looking to outsource your linen service. I know some people also like, what they'll do is they'll have kind of a central location, right? that is and this could work well especially if all of your units are kind of within proximity to each other um, you can have a central storage location and you can filter your your linens through there to where your cleaners before they go clean any of your units they're going to go to that storage location and grab the clean linens that they know that they need they will take it to your unit they will clean uh, they will replace the sheets they will bring the dirties back to that to that storage unit and then your laundry team Will come pick up the dirties have it turned around the next day drop it back off at the storage unit and then your cleaners at the next cleaning will pick up the clean ones that the laundry team dropped off and just have that cycle going and going again and that's another way that you can factor in an outdoor outside third-party cleaning service with your business if it's ideal for you to use a central location depending on how your business is set up so that's just another option for you so want to get into the house porter right your runner uh man this is a, man once you once you get to points where you can actually create this make uh make this higher this business is going to get even a lot easier <laughs> um even more easy than it already is um just in terms of the the operation from the operation standpoint so from a house porter and runner perspective make sure that everything is set up and stayed that's this is this kind of the things that they do and kept up as it should be they focus on like you know little details they can be your 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 quality control person 
um, you know, pillows, kitchen stuff, just everything. Um, usually you would like it to where they have not far proximity, right? 15 to 20 minutes away from the units would be pretty ideal if possible. Um, can manage the inventory, can restock as needed, can serve as a concierge and, and you know, um, open the home up to guests if that's the kind of model that you have um, to take care of the guest request issues, anything that might come up during their stay that they need that they need handled. Uh, these are what your porters and your runners do. So again, this is a great job for you in the beginning as you start this journey or you just be beginning stages of your journey. Then as you add units, as you build your portfolio, then you will be able to um, outsource this task completely and you'll find how much of your time is freed up once you do this. I love, love, love the fact of how automated and systematized you can create and make this business um, because that's really where the value is. I want people to understand that. That's where the value is when it comes to this entire industry is in the systems, it's in the infrastructure, okay? So um, when it comes to a porter, um, should be you or someone in your internal team personally trained by you, okay? Can't really be an outs can't really be outsourced effectively or cheaply. Understand that they need to be compensated, right? Uh, porters co usually compensated two to 4,000 a month. Um, so that's why um, the recommendation is 15 to 20, um, a few, I'll say, I'll say, uh, I don't know how many units that I have if I hired a porter. Uh, I can't even tell you how many units I had. I'll probably say, I have a slide on here that I'm gonna, that has all like the recommendation in terms of when to bring in these teams. And I'm gonna show you guys that here in a second. So we talked a lot about your field team, right? Very, very important team members. Um, I want to get into your tech team right now. So your tech team, another crucial, crucial component. These are not your boots on the ground. These are your, how, how should I say it? Boots on live, boots on the internet. <laughs> boots boots on uh, just, I don't know, on the internet essentially. So your tech partners are crucial because one of the great things about why this business works so well, one of the main reasons is because of technology. Right. Technology makes this business run very, very well. Technology saves you time. Technology saves you money. Technology makes you money. Technology makes managing your units easier. Technology uh, makes the guest experience a lot better, which can in turn lead to better reviews, which, of course, better reviews lead to uh, more bookings and more bookings lead to more money. <laughs> OK, so this is why we love, love, love technology. So some tech partners to, to think about uh, calendar management. Uh, so you can also look at that as like channel manager, dynamic pricing, uh, guest communication, right? Digital guidebook, uh, marketing data, uh, cleaning management, uh, virtual assistance, things like that. Okay. So I want to get into the cal calendar management here. So, so account management, which is also known as a channel manager, this is what helps you. Part of the main job function is to manage your bookings for you. Well, especially once you get to a point to where you're on multiple platforms, like, you know, the big three, just to, just to get it started off, Airbnb, VRBO, Booking.com. You want to get started on the big three? I'm telling you right now, one of the biggest things that you like, you don't want to deal with is a double booking, <laughs> especially a double booking that you didn't, that you found out about like late later into the reservation start date so um so yeah you want to avoid that 100 <laughs> percent. so in order to do that you need systems in place that are automated you need systems that are consistently managing the calendar that when bookings come in on one platform those dates are blocked off on the other platform when bookings are coming on any other platform those dates are blocked off on the other platforms so these are things you want to make sure that you keep in mind it helps uh, keep units booked. Okay. So it keeps the calendar up to date. Um, uh, so that way, you know, everything is uniform um, and the booking info gets shared again across multiple platforms. Um, and one of the things that I, that I also like about channel management, I did not include it on here for some reason, but of course, some of them, uh, actually a lot of them come with the uh, websites where you can actually uh, create a direct booking site as well. And I understand that um, some people might want to go ahead and get their own direct booking site created like just just get one custom custom built which is perfectly fine that's amazing um but for folks who are looking to still be able to start working on taking direct bookings but you're not quite ready to, to do that then you can definitely do it with a channel manager and i'm going to show you guys some examples of some here in a little bit 
So guest communication, this is crucial. Guest communication and guest support, very, very, very important component just in terms of the overall business, <laughs> like overall business. Um, this is why it's important that you use uh, technology in order to do this and manage this entire process. This is where you can literally automate your messaging, right? You can aut automate your guest communication based on triggers, right? Whenever something happens, whenever it's an inquiry or a booking request or an actual confirmed booking, you have to make sure that you are responding to these guests quickly, right? Um, one of the things that Airbnb ranks you on is your speed, your response rate. And understand that that response rate is crucial. It's important because it actually ranks pretty heavily. It weighs pretty heavily, I should say, on your ranking, your search ranking optimization, right? So how, act, how high you actually show up in the searches, a lot of it is determined by your speed. So they like attentive hosts. They like hosts that reply to the guests quickly. So you can literally set a messaging sequence up based on triggers, based on whatever the guest uh, hits you up with, whether it's an inquiry, whether it's a um, booking, or whether it's a request to book. Um, those triggers should be going out and it should be automated 100%. And we love Smart b, &B for this. We love Smart b, &B for this because they have perfected uh, that entire, um, just the entire messaging on autopilot process. So we love them for that. So we use them. Um, booking support, sales, getting people in the unit. So um, now then it comes to, because a lot of times those messages and those triggers are just right there. Like there are the same messages. So then of course, then of course, certain questions and more detailed questions and requests and things that the guests need, that's when you come in and, um, and you're able to talk to the guests and speak to them and not only speak to them, but really address their needs. And uh, this is a great job for a VA, phenomenal job for a VA. Um, it's also a great job for you when you get started, <laughs> as you're getting started. Um, and then you, or then eventually you will bring in a VA. Um, I think what's important to understand is when I brought in guest, automated guest communication, I promise you, it probably freed up probably about 70% of my time when I, when I got into this business. Now things have changed in terms of just the infrastructure and the size of the business and all that. But at the time it saved me a ton of time and it really, really put things into perspective in terms of what's possible in this business, how this business can be completely automated. So guest communication is, is important. And um, I think it's un, uh, is also important to know that, like I mentioned earlier, you have to, and a lot of times Airbnb, it'll say that like they, they rank your response rate, like respond within the hour. No, respond as quick as possible. You're actually on the clock. As soon as they start, as soon as you receive that inquiry or that message or that reservation, um, yeah, respond right away. This is why it's important that you use guest communication. Um, even if the message is, hey, thank you so much for your question. Um, we, we did we did receive it and we will get back to you shortly. Um, something like that make it way better than that <laughs> in terms of the way you word it but you can it can be something that simple okay so um yes so that's pretty much it for guest communication so uh so here's some resources for you right now in terms of channel management and guest communication again for us personally we use smart bnb a lot of sites have a feature to where it does reply back to the guest um, from the channel manager perspective. Um, but we just find that smart b, &B um, is just there. We, we just love the way the, the, their infrastructure is built out, the user interface. I mean, they just have it dialed in in terms of guest communication. So, um, but these other, these other platforms are great for channel management. I think it's important to know that you should, um, you should 100% um, do your research. Do your research on it, uh, figure out which which ones kind of work for you, because the truth is, uh, because the truth is, is that they all have their own kind of personality, right? They all kind of have certain certain um, certain features and, and, and systems that they bring in, that they bring to the table. Um, and you just got to figure out which one works best for you and your business model. But these are some great ones that that um, that you could look into, do some comparisons, talk to them. A lot of them offer demos that they can show you. And so uh, so definitely tap in and, and utilize channel management as, as well as guest communication to get your business uh, automated 100%. Uh, when it comes to dynamic pricing, um, when it comes to dynamic pricing, now dynamic pricing is important <laughs> for a few reasons. For one, you don't want stagnant pricing. 
You don't want stagnant pricing on your listing um, because not only will you be leaving money on the table, but especially on the Airbnb platform, what it shows Airbnb is that you're not very attentive. You're not that dialed in with your listing. So Airbnb love attentive hosts. They love hosts that check their calendar, whether you just click calendar and just look at it. Um, they love hosts that check the calendar. They love hosts that change, that, that have fluctuating dynamic prices. And they, again, yes, they 100% reward hosts like that, that are attentive in terms of search ranking optimization. So yes, your search ranking is affected based on your pricing and how it's set up. Is it stagnant or is it fluctuating? You want it to be changing. You want it to be fluctuating. And even more so still, you want to maximize your profits, right? So this is why it's important to have your prices fluctuate and not so much have them stagnant. So we love sites like Wheelhouse and Price Labs uh, because these these two uh, pricing softwares are, I, I know that there's more outside of these, um, there, but these are two that I would recommend that I have had experience with. Um, and I have plenty of students that have experience with them as well. So um, so Wheelhouse and uh, Price Labs, two great, two great um, options in terms of dynamic pricing. Um, again, you don't want pricing to be stagnant. You want to make sure that you're not leaving money on the table. <laughs> you want to make sure that you are using uh, dynamic pricing. And the way dynamic pricing works as well, they actually um, they have data. They have they have technology. They use data to to kind of gauge the demand in your particular market. And so once you set your low bait, your low price, and your and your base price, it's going to fluctuate those prices based on the supply and demand, um, based on um, your market itself in terms of what are the high seasons and low seasons within within the twelve month span, and also based on uh, what other listings in kind of like that area. Are, are, are in terms of their vacancy and their their bookings. And so it's gonna fluctuate those prices as well. You can get really custom, you can customize a lot of things like your your longer, your far out bookings, you can customize, I mean, you can customize, I mean, minimum night stays. I mean, it's a lot of things you can customize within these uh, um, pricing softwares to really optimize your pricing. So I highly, highly recommend uh, using dynamic pricing, even at the beginning level, even at the earlier stages. I believe I brought in Price Labs when I, had my third unit, I brought in Price Labs, even like with unit number one and two, when I learned how important it is that your prices be fluctuating and dynamic, not just stagnant. So I was doing it on my own every day. I would just spend time every day, just changing the prices up, figuring out, okay, this is high, okay, it should be this price this month, okay, this day, figuring the things out out that way yeah after like just <laughs> one or two units i was like yeah i ain't got time for this i had to bring a dynamic price in and it was a time saver and a lifesaver so highly 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 recommend it and that's what i got for dynamic prices and those are the two that i recommend uh when it comes to guidebook when it comes to guidebook this is another important component um and um, guidebook are amazing, right? Customized info about your units, location, your complex area, uh, provide recommendation, restaurant, shopping, attractions, um, provide, um, um, you know, check-in instructions, Wi-Fi information, how to access certain amenities, include all that stuff in your, um, in your guidebook. Now, here are some resources for your guidebook. Um, we love, love, love Hostfully. We use Hostfully Guidebook. Matter of fact, before Hostfully became a channel manager, they were a strictly a guidebook company. And they, they to me, they have one of the best guidebooks in the business. Uh, but here are some other great resources as well that are also good. I would not refer anything <laughs> that I don't, that I um either I have not used or no other people that have used them that have said good things about them. So here's some resources for guidebook. Your welcome is actually a guidebook tablet. So if you guys want to get even a little more fancy, um, you can use your welcome. And I like the your welcome tablet. We haven't used it, um, but I do know plenty of people that do. And I know one of the benefits of it is even upsells with that you can do with your welcome tablet. And it kind of provides a nice aesthetic look to your listing as well to where the guidebook, they can access it from a tablet at your home. So um, these are some great, great resources for a guidebook. We personally, we send out our digital guidebook. We send a digital version of our guidebook. Um, uh, we send about three days prior to their check-in. And you can do it differently. Some hosts do it four days. Some hosts do it two days. Some hosts do it a week before. Just depends. Um, but yeah, we send our three days prior to their check-in. And what I like about Hostfully is that 
um, they don't have to like log in or they don't have to create an account. They can, as soon as they click the link, boom, you're in the game. Um, you have access to the guidebook. A couple more things I want to touch on when it comes to guidebook. Um, one of the things that, that I think is very important, it should be a very important push for you as you're in this business, as you go towards this business, and especially in 2021, you got to have a way to, to collect guest information, collect guest information and move guests off platform. One of the ways that you can do it is by using Hostfully, right? Using Hostfully because now they have a feature to where in order for anybody to click that guidebook and have access to it, they have to put in their email address, which you can have in your uh, Hostfully account. And uh, you can you can send the, the access to your, you know, you know, your MailChimp campaign or your constant contact campaign to where you're now in a place to where you're touching and, you know, touching base with these guests and letting them know like, hey, thanks so much for staying with us. Um, now we you can book direct with us now and here's a 10% off here's a 20% off 15% off discount code next time you want to stay with us and book with us directly next time and um and uh hopefully um and like a lot of these a uh, few of these other guidebooks as well they allow you to collect the guest information prior to getting into there so that's another thing i like i like about it and um i put on here you can do printed paper or digital or both um we do we do we do digital um but now things have gotten even more savvy when it comes to guidebooks to where you can create qr codes to where that way you're not having to um do something where is it Hold on one second. I think I have one here. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> oh, this is cool that I have this here for you guys. So look at this. Um, not just guidebooks, but so I have. Hold on, I have this one too. Oh man. Okay, sorry. I can't find the the laminated guidebook. <laughs> But I will print out the guidebooks and literally laminate them, right? And put them in a kind of a book cubby in the units. Okay. So we stopped all that, especially, especially since COVID, right? Because again, um, we want to make sure that our units are not only nice, clean, but with COVID, you know, everybody's kind of touching the guidebook consistently and things like that. So now you there's you know QR codes that you can use and you can create these QR codes. And, and have the link there to your guidebook and you can stick them at different spots of your Airbnb. And not only does it, you know, it's nice, it's, it provides a more kind of a modern, kind of a futuristic feel for your units, but it's also just a nice uh, alternative instead of having a physical paper. So they'll have access to that once they're there at the unit, but they also get the link to the digital guidebook um, um, prior to their actual check-in. So uh anything i want to I'm trying to see if there's anything i missed on guidebooks but yeah that's another um uh resource when, re regarding guidebook so when it comes to cleaning management cleaning management we touched on this a little uh, earlier right uh these are the two that i would recommend uh properly or turnover uh properly is an older company turnover is a newer company um so what's what's great is that this is where you can literally this is another important component in terms of um managing your cleaning process and we talked earlier about how important your cleaning team is well this these uh, cleaning management softwares will systematize your cleaning process the entire turnover process gets systematized um we get a we get a notification once the cleaning starts boom we get a notification once the cleaning ends boom with pictures um showing us that hey it's done it's been cleaned properly and that way uh we have the confidence and this is what wherever you are <laughs> you can look at your phone and just have the confidence knowing that your business is running and the cleanings and turnovers are being done properly um create the checklist right um, um you can have your cleaners, um, you can require them to check off on the checklist as they are cleaning. And it's all all to you, all digital, right? And as you check off the checklist and it's all, and you can see that, okay, they did that, they did that, they did that, cool. So uh, create checklists, take the time to do it. <laughs> I know it does take time to do, but trust me, it's one of the, uh, there's a lot of things in this business that you just got to put in the work up front. Once you put in the work up front and you do it the right way and you actually de dedicate the time to set it up, then now it's almost like what they like to consider evergreen. It's just running. It's just doing, doing this thing and working for you. So take the time to create checklists. And it also helps to uh, that way you're not missing any cleanings. Because trust me, I think one of the worst things that could happen <laughs> in this business, of course, there, there, are, there are worse things that can happen. I'm not saying it's like the worst thing. But man, you do not want to <laughs> deal with missed cleanings. You don't want to miss, you don't want to deal with that. 
Um, and what about a cleaning that was missed? And then you had your guests check in and they walked into a dirty apartment, a dirty house. It's the worst thing, y'all. Don't. <laughs> so utilize these cleaning management softwares um, and it'll help you not miss any cleanings because it's right there. The calendar, the schedule is right there. You have access to it as an owner. Your cleaners have access to it as a, on, on the cleaning staff and it's no, no confusion. So um, definitely tap into one of these two. I mentioned earlier about how you can also use them to find cleaners, right? So a lot of these cleaning teams, they're all tapped in and logged in um, and they register with these softwares. And so they make themselves available to be hired through the platform. So say you want to hire somebody through the platform and you have a house that needs cleaning. And so you can literally send out a job. You can send a job out and guess what? You created the checklist, okay? You, you, you created the checklist. So it's, it's you can you can it's easy to follow and that way when they get there they know exactly what to do per room okay so you can find cleaners and if you like them they do a good job then keep them on your team right if not then you go go with another cleaner or do uh, repeat the process send out a job again pick another cleaner if you want so if this is one of the ways that you want to use the source cleaners it is it's not it's it's a good option um, um and it's it's literally like just the, the cleaners are there they're already rested they're there waiting to be hired so um, that's another good resource for you. Uh, so when do you need them? When do you need them? We're coming to the tail end here. When do you need the team? So I wanted to give y'all some perspective just in terms of when to bring in these team members, your tech partners, your field partners. Um, so for cleaning service from the start, off the muscle, that's how we, we like to say that, <laughs> off the rip <laughs> from the start, I recommend bringing in a new crew every five to eight units, like I mentioned earlier. Um, it just works well and everything works better that way. Maintenance ASAP. All right, another another from the start, um, a sap at E, bringing that maintenance somebody that's because because your know, one unit can can need maintenance. So, uh, bringing that maintenance person again, um, if you own if you own a property, if, of course you want to have somebody on maintenance. A lot of times, if you're arbitraging, you can use their maintenance person. But I still highly recommend that you keep a maintenance person on staff on your end as well. Um. Okay, so uh, when it comes to linen laundry service, uh, if if you want to use, if you want to outsource it, if you want to use a, a an outsource uh, third party cleaning laundry service, especially if you kind of want to do that model where we talk about that central hub where everything flows through, the dirties come in, the cleans come in, the linen service comes in, takes the dirties, bring the clean, bring them back clean the next day. The cleaners come pick up the cleans, go to the unit, clean them, bring the dirties back to the to the central location. You can do that if you want to, if your setup is optimal optimal for it. So you can look into bringing a linen laundry service uh, about fifth or sixth unit. You can you can definitely do that. Um, when it comes to channel management, okay, what you have more than one property or more than one platform, um, I recommend going with a channel manager. Um, and you can actually get it going with one property. Honestly, there are some channel managers, some of the ones that I actually recommended on that list that actually have it to where it's free for your first one. So so you can still go, you know, get a channel management, especially if you are on multiple platforms. Um, one of the two, whether you have more than one property or more than one platform, you want to make sure that you have brought in a channel management company and just like the recommendations that I had earlier. So uh, booking a guest support, this is your guest communication, right? We talked about how the importance of communicating with your guests, not only communicating with your guests, but the speed in which you communicate with your guests. Uh, um, so we talked about that. And trust me, you would want that ASAP. ASAP, ASAP. So um, again, we love Smart BNB for it, uh, and we brought we we like we brought them in ASAP. Actually, I brought them in uh, at my second my second unit, but I didn't bring them into my first unit because I didn't know about them when I had my first unit. So uh, so yeah, definitely ASAP. Your runner, um, it's that's, that's a job for you until you get to about fifteen or twenty units. Okay, then it gets really then you really cook them with grease, and you're able to outsource that entire. Uh, process and have your runner do it now can you have a runner a lot cheaper and maybe do it have them do it part-time and it had to be have it be a lot cheaper 100 yes you can 100 yes you can uh, but yeah definitely consider that that's what I recommend to bring them on your team so what will you be now understand in the beginning you will wear as many hats as possible to keep costs down and communication simple i think it's important for people to understand that especially when you're starting a new business you will and should be the technician be a technician in your business learn the game work in the weeds of it um you'll wear many hats 
right? You're going to wear a lot of hats, uh, wear as much as possible. One hat that I just refused to wear, me personally, in the beginning, cleaning hat. I never wore it. Don't want, don't want to ever wear it. <laughs> never wore it even in the beginning. Um, then then I, I hired, I outsourced a lot. Of, and trust me, nothing wrong with cleaning your own, your first unit if you want to. Me personally, I just don't feel like that's where my time is best spent. You know what I'm saying? I just understand where, my, where the value of my time lies. And I'd rather spend time picking up more units or making putting offers on deals, building relationships, um, set, setting up new units. For me, is definitely not cleaning. But <laughs> a lot of people don't have no issues with that. Trust me there's no problem if that's what you want to do, if that's what you choose to do. But again, like I said, you're going to wear as many hats as possible. I just want you to understand that it's okay to be the technician in your business. And as you scale, as you build, as you take the, as you build up your emotional callus, because, because nothing's easy, right? You're going to, it's going to come with some challenges. And as you, as you overcome those challenges, as you perfect um, just the processes and you increase your value, right? To your own business, then you could transition from going from the technician to the entrepreneur to where you're not working in your business, but you're working on your business. And so, uh, so yeah, I think that's important for you guys to know. Um, as you grow, you relinquish responsibilities so you can focus on property acquisitions, uh, entrepreneurship duties, team management, things like that, just like I said earlier. So add to your team, um, each time your current resources are becoming strange strained like like add add the system bring in the team bring in that te- bring in that piece of technology bring in that software um out on the front end don't wait till it's too late don't wait till the system breaks and you've got a you know slew of bad reviews then you you know what are you i need to go ahead and do this yeah no don't wait till then <laughs> bring it in on the front end you know what i mean so you're staying on top of things um don't wait till your system breaks get help beforehand to prevent chaos Okay, very, very simple. So just to recap, y'all, uh, man, we're almost at an hour already. Uh, just to recap, y'all, you need a team, right? You need a team. We talked about your field team. We talked about your technology team. Understand that tools and reliable people make short-term management smoother, easier, less time-consuming. Your business success depends on how good your team is. Facts. <laughs> Understand that. Your business success depends on how good your team is and how well they do at their job. And it's your job to make sure that you are setting them up for success as best way possible because they can't effectively do their job unless you effectively do yours, which is set them up for success, give them the things that they they need, make sure that you are meeting with them on a, on a, you know, on a scheduled basis to keep the importance of the, of your team, your systems, processes on the front end, keep the importance of it. That way they can stay on top of the game. The more units, the more people, as you scale, you will outsource more. But that's what makes this business amazing, okay? Many tools not needed at first. Understand, we talked about a lot of tools, a lot of team members. A lot of them are not needed off top. They're not needed at first. You can definitely do it on your own. Remember, wear as many hats as possible. Be a technician, but only to a certain point, right? As you start scaling, you outsource, and you will build the business that way. Management gets easier with experience, Okay, management gets easier with experience as you are as you are growing in your business, as you are figuring things out. What works for you, um, you're gonna get educated, right? You 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 learning and you incorporating these systems, you incorporating these field teams, you incorporate your technology team, but at the same time, um, you're 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 learning just what works for you and your business model. No two short term rental businesses are the same. Okay, I want you to understand that, um, and yours won't be the same as anybody else's. Yours is going to be to you and unique for you, okay? But your style of management, your processes, your systems will be unique for you and your business model. And it's going to align with your goals as well. So, but it'll get better and it gets easier and it gets funner <laughs> the more you get into it with experience and the more you outsource, okay? So guys, that is definitely my time. Um, I have actually had a good time. As you can tell, I don't know if y'all can tell, I love talking about this stuff. I just be running my mouth <laughs> for folks who are, um, who know me, or maybe you don't know me. Definitely, um, definitely, uh, tap in. I'm actually going to, oh man, I'm, I'm seeing all this, uh, comments. Okay. Um, clean has to be on point 100%. Um, awesome. 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 So, um, I'm going to put my handle on here. So definitely tap in on IG or no problem, no problem, no problem. I appreciate y'all 
I appreciate y'all definitely tap in with me on IG or Clubhouse. We'd love, love to see y'all and and uh, definitely stay tapped in. Uh, and for folks who you know who know or or follow me, uh, just know that I um I run my mouth on Clubhouse sometimes, <laughs> and uh, I'm always posting content. Um, either just about my journey or some content for you guys to soak up just about the short-term rental game on my Instagram. So um, this has been amazing, amazing, amazing time. I appreciate y'all for allowing me to chop it up with you and, um, and talk about the team members and your dream team that you need for your business. No problem, Vinny. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so, so much for staying tapped in. I hope you guys took notes. <laughs> um, I hope you guys took notes. Hope you guys, you know, even maybe took pictures with your phone or whatnot. Um, because yeah, this is not a presentation that gets that gets shown to plenty of people at all. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, good stuff, y'all. Great stuff. Um, I believe I'm I am the last presenter for the day. So I'm gonna go ahead and end and end the Zoom call again. Thank y'all so much. We are entering the weekend, so y'all have a blessed, blessed weekend. Y'all have a blessed uh, rest of your day, and go crush it. Take action. Take action. It is now o'clock. It is now o'clock. Definitely take action. Get in the game if you're not already. All right. Y'all have a blessed one. And I will talk to y'all on the other side. Have a blessed one.